for second half action here. And uh, I was just informed, I got the inside scoop. George Crohn's got 102 fever. 
I said, if, if you're going to get 102 fever and score 15 points every hand, give him 102 fever every game. Well, he's playing like he's on fire. <laughs> Obviously, he actually is. It's a very good point. Very good point. Well, here's Woodlands with it, trailing by nine as we begin half number two. Shot won't go. Woodlands will still have it. Yeah, that was an ugly shot by 32 Isaiah Walker there. Just didn't show any control at all, just kind of flicked it up towards the basket. But again, Woodlands is getting some decent penetration against that Hastings defense. And if they can continue to get the ball down low, it's going to be a long night for Hastings. Here's Melbourne with it. Now Tyrell Sell. Cedric Morton gets it down low, and Dabney lays it in. Nice ball movement there. Very nice, good job by by Woodlands, swinging the ball, showing some patience. And again, Dabney's that kind of same player like Scrudgers when he gets the ball down low, it's money, and they cannot let him get the ball down that deep. Something I just realized, Keith, to give the viewers out there an idea of how good Hastings is moving the ball around, here's Blake for three, no good. Just watch Woodlands move the ball. That was one of their best uh, offensive possessions before today. They moved the ball rather slowly around the perimeter and got the open shot. Hastings has the ball flying all over the court. And they're really on two completely different levels. Seven minutes to go. Hastings 32. The Falcons have 25. You know, they really are, and that's why it's so discouraging that Hastings is letting Woodlands hang around this basketball game, and Woodlands only trails by five right now, 32 to 27. So that's why it's so discouraging, because you're right, there are two different levels of basketball. Hastings is 18 and 0, Woodlands is 8 and 10, and yet this is a pesky Woodlands team hanging around, making things difficult for Hastings. Well, George Scrowder takes over and gets two points right back. He just kind of took over that possession. Melbourne has it ripped away by Chris Grelger. Beautiful play by Chris Grelger there, getting some nice defense there, reaching in, ripping it away, doing a good job defensively like he always does. So Sagru will take his time. seconds left on the shot clock. Sagru working it around, looking for something. Spinning his way forward, hits Blake, and now he'll slow it down. Hastings being patient, they're not going to force anything up to the basket. Sagru, Flaherty got blocked, rebound won't go, but Hastings will retain possession, and they get a fresh shot clock. Yeah, Joe had, Joe's layup there was a little too easy. He missed it. The second one was just as easy. He missed that one, too. But, you know, he's such a good player. He's still with the team possession. And Hastings has a new 35. Nice pass. Skrelzer connects. Nice distribution of the basketball there by the Yellow Jackets. And George swung it, swung it across to his brother Chris for the open look. Hastings leads 36-27. Ball gets turned over. Jimmy Segru yet to score a point in today's ball game. He averages 13.1 points per game on the year. Yeah, let's check and see his second half because I fully expect him to explode here. I fully expect him to explode in the second half here. He did have a couple of open looks early in the ball game, and he wasn't able to convert. But you know, shooters keep shooting. You know, George Scrooge told me that earlier in the year. He says, you know what, Keith? Shoot or shoot. And that's what I'm going to keep doing, even if I'm in a slump. So that's what I need Segru to do. Keep shooting the basketball, because eventually his shots are going to fall. Segru driving. Nice pick and roll by Scrooge. Wow. Nice pick and roll there. George Scrooge lays it in. And if he can connect on this foul shot, he'll have, not, he'll have 20 on the evening. 20 of Hastings' 39 points he'd have. So, uh, you're right. The Hastings needs to get some scoring from some of the people. And again, but if you think about it, they're scoring normally because of Jimmy Segura. He doesn't have a point tonight. So that's where they're lacking. Nice rebound by Chris Skrelger. And Hastings will retain possession. 20 seconds to go on the shot clock. Here's George Skrelger. Nice move. Fade away. No good. In and out, that almost went, but again, George creates his own shot for him. He jab stepped into the lane, got the defenders to back off, stepped back for the open 15-footer, and I'll, 
I'll have that Tim take that shot every night. He's going to nail 70% of those. So that's a good shot for Hastings, even though it didn't go. Nice jumper there by Justin Dabney. Segru and Hastings now trying to fly around the court. And Dabney's got 14 nice points in his own. Segru, jumper, no good. Nice rebound there by the Falcons. You yeah, know, it was a good job, but again, you see Joe Flaherty diving on the floor for the loose ball, and he cre he caused that pile up on the floor, and just Woodlands came away with it. Nice job by Morton, laying it in. And Morton's got eight points on the night. So Woodlands basically doing all their damage with Morton and Dabby, but it's enough to hang close to this Hastings team. Here's Skrelja. Segru with it now. Passing it back and forth with Danny Blake. Hastings loses it. And Woodlands has it. 3.45 left here in the third quarter. 38-31. Jackets have the lead. Dabney doing his work inside. And he's a tough inside player. Justin... Justin Dabney doing a nice job freeing himself inside. Got a free look at the basket, couldn't convert. And there was Cedric Morton right there for the offensive rebound. He couldn't convert, but he got fouled, so it's going to be Woodlands basketball. Dabney checks out of the ball game. So Woodlands will have to get some scoring from other players. Well, they got Morton still in the game, and he's the guy who's you know, it's been a one-two punch for Woodlands so far. And they still got Morton, who can fill up the hoop. to the outside, driving, self put it in. So Tyrell now has four on the game, and it's 38-33 with 3.15 remaining in the third. Wow, Sagru is in an amazing ball handle and just a phenomenal point guard. Here's Chris Strelton. Down low to George, great pass. That one goes against Woodlands. And I, don't, I didn't see the foul there. They haven't called that all game long. All of a sudden, Neil Burnicott's going to start calling that. Oh, you have to play well. You know, Neil Burnicott is one of the top officials in Section 1. Hastings has been very lucky. They've gotten some great officials assigned to their games. Jamal Cumberbatch checks in for Woodlands. Get there! Get there! Get there! Interception. Hastings turns it over. And the layup is good by Kevin Martin. Lead is cut to three. Nice move by Skrelja. And he gets fouled going to the hoop. And extra push off. He's going to get a technical foul. That's number 32, Isaiah Walker, being very undisciplined. silence there because we were trying to figure out what's going on here and uh, basically we had a double technical foul Charlie if you could walk the viewers through what happened because I didn't see what happened I had my head turned yeah um, it was very simple the original foul was called on the layup as uh, Skrelja was going hard to the hoop then Isaiah Walker just took an elbow and he didn't really hit Chris Skrelja but he pushed him hard with his elbow Chris Skrelja not happy did the smart thing looked right to the referee and the ref made the call now, I don't know why it's a double technical. Well, basically, I believe what happened is the official felt that Chris Kozik Chris got verbal with, uh, with Isaiah Walker. I don't know what he said. He claimed he didn't say anything, and Coach Ward believed him because Coach Ward was ready to yank Chris Skrelja out of the game because that is something he will absolutely not tolerate. He will not allow his players to get technical fouls and stay in the ballgame because he feels that's just out of control play. He's not going to allow his team to do that. But he asked Chris Skrelja for an explanation. Chris gave him one. 
Coach Ward believed what he had to say, so he left Chris in the ballgame. Scrolger missed his first shot and misses his second. Now, here's something I don't understand. If it's a double technical foul, then Woodland should be shooting two free throws right now. They should be shooting the Chris Scrolger free throw. So, I don't know why they're not going to shoot it. I guess you know what it must be. Those were the foul shots for his shot. And since it was a double technical, nobody will shoot the baskets. Nobody's going to shoot the technicals. They'll only shoot the free throw shots. But wouldn't everyone be around the line if that, you know, because I... I guess because it's a dead ball foul, and Hastings will have possession of the basketball, but that's why there's nobody around, because Hastings retains possession whether he makes it or misses it. Hastings retains possession. Head coach of Woodlands not too happy about Dave that. Dave Van one. Diver getting very animated on the sideline. Didn't believe that ball. Here's Danny Blake. 240 left in the third quarter. Hastings leading 38-35. Segru looking for something. Flaherty, what a pass by Jimmy Segru. <laughs> Charlie, I'm the color commentator on this broadcast, and I'm supposed to explain how that happened, but all I'm going to say is, wow. Clarity with a quick steal. Here comes Skrelja. Slows things down. What a move as he pumps it home. And Skrelja now has 21 on the evening. Two minutes to go. Hastings showing life. Well, more than life, they're showing signs of pulling away. Jumper won't go. Here comes George Strelja, and he'll wisely slow things down. Charlie, I agree with you. They do show signs of pulling away, but they're going to have to finish the deal because they've been in this situation before, twice in this ball game. They've had eight, nine-point leads, and they haven't put Woodlands away, and they've come right back. Three won't go. Strelja with the rebound. Flaherty puts it home. Joe Flaherty with his eighth point on the evening. How about that look by Chris Skrelja? What an outstanding pass by Chris Skrelja. That kid's doing it all tonight. He's playing defense, he's rebounding, he's making assists, he's just doing a phenomenal job here in tonight's game. Scoring two, he's got the second leading scorer on the Jackets with 11. His brother has 21. Nice move to the hoop by Kevin Martin. That's his sixth point of the night, Charlie. Cedric Morton set to check in for Woodlands. And again, I think what Morton brings to this Woodlands basketball team is he brings toughness. He's the guy that's going to do the dirty work underneath. And so far up and down the floor, Hastings has had their way with rebounding, and that's because Morton's been on the bench. And that foul is going against Hastings. Head coach Chris Ward very disappointed in the ref's call. Coach Ward felt that uh, Danny Blake got run over there. The official disagreed, so it's Woodlands basketball, trailing by seven. Take away by Strelza, and here comes Segru. Jimmy Segru has such great vision, too. Nice pass by Strelza, and Flaherty puts it in. Wow. I'm not sure if it's a season high, but Joe Flaherty now in double digits with 10 points on the evening. It's definitely a season high. Jumper, no way. Flaherty pulls down the rebound as time expires here in the third quarter. Hastings has come alive. They lead by nine. Well, you know what, though? They had a nine-point lead at halftime. They've got a nine-point lead at the end of the third quarter, which means they traded baskets with Woodlands in the third quarter. With a nine-point lead, that's acceptable, but it's not desirable. What you want to do is they've built up a nine-point lead over two quarters. You want to continue to extend that lead, get a 13, 14, 15-point lead going into the final quarter, making it extremely difficult for this Woodlands team to come back. And it stands right now, it's still get, Woodland still has their work cut out for them. They cannot afford to trade baskets in the fourth quarter like they did in the third quarter. 
And basically what I look for them to do is to get this game in that hectic up and down pace like they've gotten it. Now, the last two or three minutes of the game, they got it there, and what didn't what they didn't want to happen was to have Hastings convert. They did. But it took some incredible passing by the Strelger brothers to get that to happen. And again, I mean, I don't understand how Joe Fardy caught that ball, how he would have expected. I don't think anybody, I think there was one person in this gym that knew that he was going to pass the ball to, to Flaherty, and that was Skrulja himself, because it was such an amazing look. Well, scoring by quarters average on the season, Woodlands averages 15.7, Hastings averages 15.2, so if that holds true, Hastings will win by 8.5. That's fourth quarter scoring, correct? Correct. has the possession arrow, which means they'll start the uh, fourth quarter off with the ball. Yeah, Charlie, statistically, if you break this game down, Hastings averages 67 points a game, Woodlands averages 57 points a game, and where the two teams differ is in the first half. Hastings is outscoring Woodlands on the season by 10 points in the first half. They had a nine-point lead going into halftime. So statistically, this game has held true so far. Segrou taking his time. George Skrelja for three. No good. Yeah, George had the open look, and again, it just didn't fall, but he's got to keep taking that. They're going to not guard him from 19 feet. He has to take those open jump shots. Here's Melbourne taking away easily. By yeah, nice Skrelja. anticipation by Skrelja there, and he's looking to go coast to coast. Dishes to his brother, shot won't go. Here's Flaherty with the rebound. Jumper no good. Rebound goes to Woodlands. Well, Joe Flaherty, 10 points on the evening and nine rebounds. Yeah, he's had a, hell of a, game, a heck of a game tonight, Charlie. And, uh, you know, this is what he does game in and game out. You have to come to every game to appreciate Joe Flaherty's role in this team because he is a dominant force out there. I was looking for a double-double. That'll be a first time uh, all season long, I think, for any Hastings player. Uh, George, George's might have had 10 rebounds in the game before. I know he's had at least eight. He might have had 10. And depending on how you count the double-double, I'm sure Jimmy Segrou's had 10 points and 10 assists at least in one game. That's a good point, too. But it's still a nice accomplishment to get a double-double, I agree. Chris Strelzer with it. Here's Flaherty. Now George Strelzer. Shot won't go, but we'll say it was a pass to his brother, Chris, and he gets fouled on the layup. Definitely, if Chris Strelzer had converted that, that would have been credited for an assist for George, without a doubt. But again, Chris did a nice job creating the look for himself, getting the, the Woodlands player on his back, and going up and creating the foul shot for himself. Strelge's 12th, 12th point on the evening. Yeah, Chris playing a great game tonight so far. And he hits them both. So Woodlands, I think, just needs to show some patience here, Charlie. They still have six minutes to go. They're trailing by nine, but they need to get some good open looks. They can't afford to just throw shots up there. And I wouldn't even start taking threes if I were them. I would just try to get some good looks at the basket. And that's not one of them. Cedric Morton played a little out of control there. Kind of went crazy. And uh, got three or four shots at the basket. None of them were good. Oh, good shots. Six minutes to go. If George Strelja can average 1.5 points per minute, he'll have 30. You are an engine nerd. A lovable engine nerd, but an engine nerd nevertheless. Hastings, again, showing very good patience on offense, trying to work for a good shot. 
going to stay his man for that. If Joe had been cutting to the basket there, that was a great look by George Squelger because he anticipated Joe, uh, Joe cutting to the basket. He would have had a layup. There was nobody between him and George, and they would have had a nice layup there. But Joe kind of thought George was going to shoot it. He was crashing the board to the rebound, and it deflected off a of Woodlands player for Hastings' possession. Squelger. Segura with an NBA three. No good. And Chris Ward saying it's his fault about the shot clock. He forgot to warn the player. Almost stolen away. Woodlands working it around. Morton. Jumper, no good. Hastings ball. Yeah, again, Charlie, you know, Hastings, uh, Woodlands showed a really nice patience there, working around, trying to get a good shot, and then they throw a crazy air ball, no-look shot like that. It just defeats the whole purpose, and it's actually a double whammy, because they just killed 20 seconds off the clock, trailing by nine, they didn't get a good look. They didn't, you know, you can't have that happen. It's like a double negative. Nice pick set. Segru, no good. So once again, well, he remains scoreless. Two on one break. Morton takes it himself, no good. They throw it out. Here comes Skrelja, breaking towards the basket, lays it in. Beautiful move by George Skrelja. He's just such an unbelievable athlete. He was caught in midair. The ball was pinned. He didn't really have a shot, but he just created his own shot for himself and ended up nailing for the two. That's 23 points on the evening for the big man. How many does he need to average now per minute? To get 30. Chris Scrooge is playing his normal, excellent game for Hastings. But again, just touching on uh, Jimmy Segru for a little bit. Jimmy Segru's got to keep shooting. That was an open five-foot look. He's got to keep taking that shot, Charlie. I don't want to see him going, you know, into a little hibernation there and stop shooting. Because if he can get open looks from five feet, he's got to take that shot every single time, whether it falls or not. There's several reasons why. Number one, he's a good shooter. And I know there's only four minutes remaining in the game, but if he can hit two, three, four in a row right now, raising his shooting average a little bit to where it normally is, Hastings blows him out here. They get a nice lead, you know, they have an 11-point lead right now. Next thing you know, it'll be a 20-point lead. Number two, with the way Chris Skrelja bangs the offensive glass, George Skrelja hits the offensive boards, and need we say anything about Joel Flaherty in the offensive glass, they have three offenders that they can go to pick the ball off the backboard and put it up and in. So it's almost like an assist. If Jimmy can put the ball on the rim softly, he either falls for two or kicks around, Hastings gets the rebound, puts it back in, it's an assist. What's the difference if he passes it to him and they shot it themselves? None. That's why a guy like Jimmy Segrew's got to keep shooting the basketball. Back to your question. 1.71 points per minute. And Scrubs will be there. I'd love to see him get that dunk, though. That would be nice. That would be nice. 30 is a nice milestone also. Has he had 30 all year yet? I don't think so. You know, he definitely has it because George sacrifices his scoring for the team. If you look at his assist, you know, to shot ratio, he's, he takes a lot, he has a lot more assist than shots on a, on a ratio basis all year long. So, I mean, he's sacrificed scoring. He could easily lead the section in scoring. There's no doubt in my mind. He's sixth or seventh in the section right now. You got Jamal Webb from Tucker, number one. Uh, Stan from RZ, number two. And DePauli from North Salem, number three. And there's no doubt in my mind George could fill it up a lot more than they could on a night-to-night -night basis. Nice drive by Self. No good. Rebound is loose. Melbourne has it. Now Morton driving. Shot won't go. <laughs> There's a player down on the field. On the court, it's George Strelja. Charlie, very eloquent description of the play-by-play -play action there. Yeah, again, you know, Chris Morton is a bull on the boards. He just consistently dominates the offensive and defensive class for Woodlands, and he got a couple of open looks for himself. This is one thing you do not want to see if you're a Hastings fan. Strelja has been riddled with injuries all season long. 
but he, he looks like he's all right. He's going to stay in the ball game. Again, you know, I'm sure the 102 temperature is affecting him. He's played the entire game, has not substituted yet once, and he's flying up and down the court. You know, both offensively and defensively, he's playing a heck of a ball game tonight. Traveling call against Dabney. That one hurts. Yeah, it was either going to be a three-second call or a walking, a walking a traveling violation. <laughs> and the clock is definitely not in Woodland's favor at this point. Nice passing by the Jackets. Blake Skrelja was looking for the dunk. Here's Chris Skrelja with it. And again, I think that was one of the times I talked about earlier, how Skrelja likes to dunk the basketball, not because he thinks he's going to make it, but just to send a message that you can't foul him on the way up because he might dunk it on you, and then he's just going to go to the line. Well, Keith Hastings has only hit one three all day. It was their second basket of the game, and that's their trademark. No, nonetheless, they have an 11-point lead right now with three minutes to go. Flaherty, wide open, Chris Skrelja, and he puts it in. Chris Skrelja definitely walked on that call, but there was no call by the officials, so you know what? I'm wrong. He didn't walk, and it's two points for Hastings. But yeah, and actually, on that dunk attempt, I think it just slipped out of George's hands. I think if he had been able to pound the basketball and control it the whole way up, he would have dunked that with authority. Morton. Looking for a shot. Three won't go. Segrew with the easy rebound. And here comes Skrelja on a break. Skrelja leaves it home. He dunks it home with authority. Wow. And there's George Skrelja's athleticism for you. He basically caught the ball, dribbled once, went up, elevated, and dunked it. And again, that sends a message. Well, Jordan, excuse me, Skrelja has 25 on the night. Shot won't go. Skrelja fires it down court. Blake wide open, dishes to Chris Skrelja, behind the back, Flaherty puts it in. That's incredible. And Chris Ward is going insane. He's so ecstatic with that play. Well, he knows his team is playing well. And it's like I talk about all year long. Have we heard Chris Ward at all in the last two minutes of the game? No, because he knows what to let his, go, his team go play. He doesn't have to say anything. They're playing unbelievable. They're getting dunks, they're getting behind the back passes. Joe Flaherty scoring 12 points on the night. And this is the, what is he, about 32 rebounds by now? I mean, they're playing incredible, so he just lets them play. He doesn't need to coach them. They don't need to hear him screaming at him yelling. When they're not playing well, he's going to coach them up. He's going to tell them what they're doing wrong and how to do it right so they can get to where they're playing right now. Even the refs were smiling after that one. And an amazing play by Chris Skrelja. And it really shows you the talent level they have. I mean, they might be able to bust that out, you know, first, second quarter during a normal game. Obviously, it's the end of the game, so they're trying to get a little fancy. But uh, just amazing talent, and it's I can't wait till the sectional playoffs because it's going to carry them far. <laughs> they got to get by North Salem first. I mean, they're probably going to be the number one seed in the section, win or lose against North Salem. But it's going to be an interesting test against North Salem. Unfortunately for HOH viewers, this game will be on the air after the North Salem game is live. So, you know, I'd like to see uh, a lot of fans get out there for the North Salem game, but... It's going to be already played, but again... Maybe they'll have time-traveling machines by the time this gets on the air. <laughs> Buck 45 to go. Hastings with an insurmountable 17-point lead. Well, again, we talked about it. they had that nine-point lead, and they were not able to put the Woodlands team away. But now they go in an 8-0 run. And they put that Woodlands team away. Now they got that 17-point lead. And with a minute 33, uh, Coach Ward is not going to wait for Coach Van Diver to concede this ball game. He's going to put his second unit in, get them a little bit of playing time, heading into the sectional playoffs, like you said. Well, Skrelja will finish his night with 25 points on the evening. Uh, not bad. Very impressive. His brother had 15. And the other contribution coming from Joe Flaherty with 12 points. Danny Blake and Jimmy Segrew only combined for two on the evening. Uh, but they had a lot of assists. Well, you know, Charlie, we've talked about this team a lot. And about what makes them such a difficult team is they might only play five players on the floor a lot. You have an exceptional player in George Skrelja. You have a very special player in Chris Skrelja. 
have the deadly three-point shooting of Sugru and Blake. Then there's Joe Flaherty. He does all the dirty work, doesn't score a lot of points, gets all the rebounds, does all the dirty, plays tough defense, plays the, he always plays the best post player for the other team defensively, shuts that guy down, and he also gets all the rebounds. So, okay, so you talk about the game, Jimmy Sugru, no points, they get Joe Flaherty to pick up the slack. If they can get that through the section of playoffs, and if they can make out of the section to the state tournament, they are going to be impossible to beat. Not difficult, impossible to beat. If they can have a guy like Joe Flaherty quadruple his season average in one night, because Jimmy Segrew is held scoreless. Here's Danny Wolf. Zach Brown with it. And now here's Ryan Malone. Over to Mike Quinn. Joe Speranza, the other man in the ball game. Danny Wolf. Quinn throws up a three. No good. Nice rebound by Zach Brown. And he lays it out to Wolf. <laughs> Driving to the basket. Shot won't go. And Woodlands has it. Woodlands with it. But again, Hastings second unit. We've gotten on them a lot for coming into the ball game immediately and not sh playing the way they're capable of playing. But right there, they showed very good patience on offense. They got a great shot, and here we go. They played very good defense, and they got a good job of uh, tying up a loose ball that was Woodlands had the possession out, so they're going to retain possession. But nice job defensively by Hastings. For three, no good. Hastings will have the ball. So Ryan Malone looking to inbound for the Jackets. 40.8 seconds on the clock. This I understand. Why Woodlands is still pressing at this point. They still have their first. Great pass. Down low. Brown lays it in. Zach Brown with his fourth varsity point. He scored two points against Brown. 20 seconds to go. It's going to be fouled on the drive. The thing that blows me away, Hastings has a 19-point lead. There's 18.2 seconds in the game. They have their second offense, their second team in the game. And what's Coach Ward doing? Screaming, yelling, going crazy, coaching up his team. The guy never stops coaching. 18 point seconds left, 18.2 seconds left in the game. He's got a 19 point lead, he's still coaching. It reminds me a lot of Skip Violante. He demands perfection. Rebound is put home. 15 seconds to go, Hastings. Woodland's still in the press. Which makes no sense to me, but. Down low shot is good. Two seconds to go. And this one ends 58-43. Hastings with a 15-point win. They remain undefeated, 19-0, and looking very strong. Game high score was George Skreldu with 25 points. Him and his brother Chris, who had 15, dominated for Hastings. Uh, Hastings never, never trailed in this one. Just a, an impressive showing against a Woodlands team who had been playing well as late. They now move to 8 and 11 on the year. Yeah, you know. Woodlands was on fire. They won three of their last four ball games. They beat Leak and Watts. They beat Dobbs Ferry, some quality basketball teams. And, uh, you know, they played really well. Hey, uh, Woodlands got it down to two a couple of times. But very good job by Hastings to finally get that. The third time was a charm for Hastings. They had that nine-point lead for the third time, and they were able to finally put it over the top, and they went on that quick run. I think the George Scrooge dunk ignited the Hastings offense, and that led them out to victory. We'll be uh, right back with an interview with Coach Ward.
Yes, yeah, Scott. Uh, yeah, nine point. I'm here with head coach Chris Ward. Uh, first of all, coach, congratulations on a great game. Charlie, thank you. I want to thank you and uh, Coach Fagan, as always, for uh, for broadcasting here in, at, in Hastings and on WHOH. We hope the community enjoyed it again. We certainly did. It was a lively crowd and a great high school atmosphere for basketball this evening. Mm. Uh, coach, tonight you guys had a nine-point lead three separate times. Uh, it seemed like you couldn't, you know, put them away. Will Lands kept coming back. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, that's a credit to Dave Van Diver and his staff over at Woodlands. Uh, they just never stopped coming at us. Um, they did some great things. They took care of the ball. We missed some shots that we normally make. Um, we got impatient a couple of times in our possession situation. I told our kids that in a playoff situation, you've got to be able to grind it out a little bit. We got impatient a couple of times, shot it quick. They made on the other end, and then they were able to cut the lead down to, I think it was a three-point game at one point. Mm. Uh, can you talk Talk a little bit about the play of George Skrelja. He's got 102 degree fever and he's playing like he's on fire. He finished with 25 points. He finished with 25 and he got him every which way but loose. I mean, he got in the post, he got it off to slash. George is a special player because he's six foot five. He handles it so well and he can do it in the open court and he, and he can wriggle in and, and 102 degree fever. Big players play big in big games. This was a huge one for us tonight and George showed that he is without question my vote and my pick for uh, Mr. Basketball of Westchester County this evening. Uh, well, Coach, I looked at the schedule. Next game is North Salem. So uh, I'm going to ask you about it. Can you just uh, preview it for us a little bit? Yeah, I'll preview it for you. You know, uh, we lost a heartbreaker to them in the county semifinal last year. Everybody knows that. Um, they've got two great players in, in D. Paoli and, and, uh, and Morley, Marley, uh, Chris Morley. They're, and they've got a good cast around them. Them. They played very, very well together. They're well coached by Coach Sony. It's going to be a very tough game. It's going to be an interesting game. We want to tell people in the community that are interested in coming to the game Saturday nights, the 7 o'clock tip-off up there. They're expecting standing room only. So we need to be up there by 6 o'clock, 545. If they don't get there on time, it's okay because they're going to have a live television link in the auditorium for the overflow crowd they're expecting in North Salem. So it's going to be a great atmosphere for uh, high school basketball here in Westchester County, but more importantly, it's going to be a great atmosphere for the small school. Absolutely. Uh, Coach, once again, congratulations. You guys moved to 19-0. and 0. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you so much, Charlie, and, 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 and Keith, thank you so much, uh, as always, and we hope we see you Saturday night uh, up there. Well, Fantastic. I'll have you talk to my boss so I can get off okay. work. Okay. All right. Um, well, that will just about do it here uh, from the Cochran Gymnasium. George Skelger feeling a little under the weather with 102 degree fever so we don't want to bother him. Um, but uh, thank you for Ke uh, to Keith Fagan. Did an excellent job on the color. Um, thank you uh, to the cameraman. And uh, that'll just about do it. I'm excited. This team looks unbelievable. They're 19-0, right, number one in the state. And we'll be bringing you the North Salem game next. Uh, until next time, I'm, for Keith Fagan, I'm Charles Berger.